Uh, Om Shanti and welcome to everyone. Those of you tuning in for the first time, maybe through the YouTube video, um, if you don't know us, my name is Shailen and my mother and I, we are students of the London Centre um, in the UK. And um, we've been studying the Brahma Kumaris Raj Yoga for a number of years um, now. My mother began studying with Devi Jen Ki, who was the main teacher there in the 1980s. And this forum is really an opportunity for BKs to think about some of the concepts that come up in the teachings of the Brahma Kumaris, and we go into quite a lot of philosophical depth. Um, there are also no silly questions here. Anyone can make points, discuss things, and think about things. So that's the purpose, and thanks for tuning in. So those of you uh, here live, I wonder if any of you have any thoughts you'd like to begin with. Uh, I know that Renjin Ben has chosen a uh, morally for us to read later on, and I think you might be aware that yesterday was Dada Jagdish's anniversary day. He left the body on the 12th of May 2001, and I think it might have been before all of your time, all of you that are here, um, so you wouldn't have met Dada Jagdish in person, and um, she's uh, chosen a morally where Baba's speaking with him for a little bit after the morally, so you'll get a little bit of that as well. But before we go into that, any topics that you would like to take up, any questions that you have, or any sharings that you have about your efforts or anything, then feel welcome to begin with that. Om Shanti, I have a question or maybe more statement. Um, it's on meditation. Now, we who have been in um, Gyan for a number of years should understand this fully, however. And I think we all have little challenges during meditation at Amrit Bela. Now, my thing is, we are meditating. Generally, when you're meditating, or, or if a, a person who is not a BK meditate, and they would meditate and focus and envision something that they want. Or oh, I, I focus on... You know, I'm meditating and I'm looking at a, a, a new home or maybe a new car or something like that. What, how do we as BKs meditate? Because during meditation, there is, we have never seen God. We were not fortunate enough to see um, Bab Dada or Brahma, Brahma Baba in person. Now there is no vision or no, nothing that we could visualize Apart from what Baba is telling us, we visualize him in the, the subtle region. And we have to just imagine this is what he looks like. And this is what we, we sit and we sit under that light. But when you're meditating, um, how do you go about, what are we meditating for? We're meditating or we're, we're meditating and connecting to God just in silence, just, just from, from, uh, with, with no intentions, no nothing no expectation, uh, what advice do you have for us on that? Because when normally, when, normally when you meditate, you meditate saying, uh, I want things to be right in the family. I want things to be good with the people around me, you know, on the job or something like that. But we're meditating with no real expectations for anything at all. It's a little more difficult to do that when you're sitting and just taking that light um, with no intentions. I, I don't know what, how you could elaborate on that. Yeah, um, I think it is an interesting topic. So we tend to think about knowledge and yoga as two different things, but really it is the daily listening of the morally that helps us to understand who Shiv Baba is and who Brahma Baba is. And so the comment that Baba had made one or two weeks ago in the Morali was that um, you, many of you don't have visions the way that Brahma had visions, but like Mama, she didn't have any visions either. However, that listening to the Morali each day provides a vision. So 
there is one type of vision where it is really through understanding we're developing a picture, a notion, and through that there's a connection. And that's why we have to listen to the morally every day. And one thing I was trying to bring out in this week's uh, daily podcast was that how each day we were getting a different side of Baba that we're connecting with. So you'll remember that one day was like Baba, our creator of fortune, another day Baba, our purifier, uh, another day it will be something else. And so what you have there is through that understanding, we are beginning to develop a picture of who should Baba is. And secondly, the sentiments that he feels and the, con and the roles and specialities he has. And then our job in meditation is to experience them. So for example, this morning, Baba was emphasizing to us two qualities that he has permanent and that we don't, we vary. And that's purity and knowledge. And so when we practice that in yoga, we're looking at Baba and we are visualizing Shiv Baba as this point of light who is also an ocean because a point in our world is a small thing, but a point in the soul world is an ocean. And so the time, the space, everything works differently in that world. And so Shiv Baba is this soul who has the capacity to fulfill everyone. And so by taking that understanding from the morally, I will then visualize Shiv Baba. And I was doing this as I was listening to the morally as well. And that's a good way of doing it. So it's like um, you're almost using the morally as a meditation commentary. And so thinking about how Shibaba's purity is permanent and what must that feel like to have a stage where you've never known impurity, you've never known vice, you know, it's never polluted your consciousness. There's only one soul who has that experience. And so what happens is that as I'm listening to that and I'm thinking, so I heard it, shabbat has got permanent purity. I thought about that point a few days ago that shabbat is our purifier. So that made sense to me, that who would be the purifier? And so then I will say to Baba, I will, like, I will marvel at Baba, that Baba, you are this one soul who is so eternally pure. You are the incorruptible, and you are my purifier now. And so I have that faith that you will get me there. Because Baba said today that even the sinners like Ajahn, I make them into the masters of the world. So what he's saying is it's not a big deal for me. that I can even make the most sinful person worthy of heaven. So I think, okay, Baba, you've got this power to purify. No other soul has this power to purify. So it's not just like a purity of celibacy. It's not just a purity of vegetarianism. It's not just a purity of some innocence, of sincerity. That's the way we have purity down here. But this is a purity that can purify others that can remove the sins of others, that can remove the alloy from others. This is a purity that can instill peace and happiness inside of the soul for half a second. This is a purity that can in, instill, pure, instill peace and happiness inside of nature for half a second. So when I look at that, so I will 
think of Baben in that form of the point and marvel. And so I will use those points of the Morali to then experience that in yoga. So I'm talking to Baba. This is what Brahma Baba teaches us in the Morali, that you talk with Baba in that way of your praising Baba. So what we hear in the Moralis is Brahma Baba telling us what Shiv Baba is like. So he did this. He took these points and then he experienced them and then he shares with us his experiences. And this is the process of Raj Yoga. So we have to have this aim that by the end of our time with Baba, we should have experienced every point of the Morada in yoga. And as we continue to practice those points, that experience deepens. So the same point we practiced before, we practice some years later, it should become deeper and deeper. Then, like, when it comes to experiencing Shiv Baba with Brahma Baba, so Bhattada, as you all know, um, I emphasize to you all to listen to the whole messages on a Thursday. And Ranjan Ben and I have always given that importance anyway. And when I came to visit you in New York and uh, my other thought was that if Sister Mahini was there on the Thursday, I would like to attend the Borg offering live because that I haven't done for probably 10 years or so. So, um, of course, through remote means, we've got great opportunities to attend through the computer. But in, in person, I hadn't attended for some years. And it was really a wish in my mind to do that. And as you know, Baba fulfilled that wish, and of course, even more than that. Now, I do feel that those bold messages help us to connect with the subtle way. And as we listen to those bold messages, they feel like a creative meditation commentary to me. And then what I find useful is then interpreting them into English for all of you. So I listen to them again. And I find that because I'm interpreting, I'm listening even more carefully that second time. So I'll hear them on the Thursday in the morning. And we now have our routine for, I'm, like Benjamin and I like to do a variety of things at Amrit Veda and we, I find that that variety, it creates that sort of a, you know, keeps you sort of motivated and awake and things. So our Amrit Veda on a Thursday morning is listening to those three or four Bhul messages. So I put on the Bhul message and follow it like a comment. So it's like going with that sister up to the soul, subtle region and visualizing it all. And you tend to find like um, Sister Shashi's one, they're very visual. Like Baba is standing atop a golden mountain and these golden rays. So it's a really nice creative experience, also filled with a lot of knowledge, filled with very powerful messages for us. So. That's what I do for that subtle region. Um, um, and this morning during Amrit Bed, I did the interpretation. So I knew I wouldn't have time. And so I combined, I had to combine the yoga and the service. But that's what I'm doing. So it is really yoga there. Then the third is karma yoga. And with karma yoga, I will tend to visualize the angelic body of Brahma in the room with Shiv Baba in his forehead as well, so combined about that. And wherever I go, I, can, I, I really felt quite a little proud. Um, Sister Jenti had come to do a program 
at my university in January 2017. And of course, when you're doing these programs, you're remembering Baba, you're creating the atmosphere, and you're hoping that souls will be touched by Baba. And when a senior sister comes, you feel that even more, right? And right throughout, she was coming, there was the, an ambassador, an ambassador of Indonesia was coming for that program. So there were many things, you know, VIPs, you, you want everything to go smoothly, of course, but the most important thing is to create an atmosphere and make Baba present. So it's something I've practiced for many years and about 25, 30 years ago, one sister said to me that we have to make a contract with Baba. And uh, it was something that they had learned from Daddy Janky that there's things that we got to do and things Baba has to do. So Baba gives light and might and we got to do the actions. You know, there's like a partnership here that has to happen. So for me, it was about keeping Baba present. And after the program, Sister Genty wrote to me and said, I felt Baba's presence all the way through. And I felt really proud about that. And so this is the one thing I do try and do wherever I go, that when I enter a room, the people in that room should feel Baba has become present. And um, we were in Chicago and we went to visit a couple of BKs and um, they have a business and they'd asked us to just come and share blessings and vibrations and uh, we did a, I did a little meditation commentary and we invoked Baba and they said, oh, we really felt Baba come into the arrangement. So this is a practice over a period of time and we develop our confidence with this practice that in karma yoga, we can make Baba present. So if we practice this visualization, and when I used to drive a car, I used to visualize Baba in the seats next to me, or sometimes I'm driving Baba, he's in the back seat, I'm driving like this. And I used to find that often I have very good yoga as I'm traveling. Yeah. So in this way, wherever we are, whatever we're doing, there's that karma yoga of keeping Baba in the room. And that also gives us attention. So I shared this with you before, I think, that I'd had a few chances to sit down with Dada Vishra who he came to Baba in 1939, and probably he was the best yogi out of all of the Madhavan Nirasas, very focused yogi. And he used to conduct the Amrit Velos back in the day. And um, I remember sitting with him one-on-one -on -one a couple of times, and he used to serve in the accounts department at that time. And he said that he always keeps a spare chair in his office. And whenever he sits, he just asks Baba to come and sit in that chair. And even if he's having to concentrate on numbers and paperwork, and he, but by having put Baba in the room, it's like he's got this subconscious awareness and that part of his mind is aware that Baba is watching. So this is the other side of making Baba present, that we become attentive. You know, Baba is looking at me. How am I doing things? How am I handling this? How am I talking to this person? How am I looking at this person? So by Having Baba in karma yoga, it helps us to improve the quality of our karma and our interactions. And then when we sit, we've got to forget our actions. And then our job is to take our mind out of the drive. So we go back to those practices with Shri Baba and the soul world. We can go back to those practices of meeting Baba in the subtle region. So there's the karma yoga yoga, and then there's the sitting down yoga. And both of those have to be practiced. All of those have to be practiced. 
And then the fourth type of yoga is the practice of soul consciousness. And so as we're talking with souls, we have to develop an attitude and vision that I'm talking with my brother soul. If it's a Brahmin, I'm talking with a soul who has a right to brother's sustenance, brother's love, brother's education, brother's training. This is a soul who has the father, the teacher, the Sadhguru. This is an angel to become a deity. So we've got to look at the soul and we've got to keep in our intellect who this soul is. And if they're not a BK, they're still Shababa's beloved child. And so I've got to look at them with that vision of the rosary of Rudra, that we were all together in the soul world with Rudra Baba. So we're all connected really in that eternal truth. And um, in this way, these four types of yoga, that's where we've got to build our chart of a minimum of eight hours. So in our concentration, we're not trying to dead, deaden the mind. We're not trying to remove thoughts from the mind. The concentration that Baba teaches us is of continuously keeping the thoughts in the line of knowledge. So we are not just uh, emptying the mind. We're not just, concentration doesn't just mean being in one thought. Although when we're sitting, that's a good, good practice sometimes, but we might not be able to hold that for very long because we've got to train our mind. We've got to build our strength. So then what we need to do is we just need to be keeping our mind active in these things. So my experience of concentration is a deeply connected with soul conscious vision. If I've been slack in my soul conscious vision, then when I sit, I won't concentrate. I won't be able to hold my mind in one period. But it's the karma yoga that actually empowers the concentration in sitting room. But the karma yoga will only be powerful if the Amrit Vela is powerful. And so at Amrit Vela, we've got to get up. Now, sometimes, depending, when, when we come to Babel, we might be filled with all sorts of things, all sorts of mixture, all sorts of pain, all sorts of, we're affected a lot. And it might be that we just need to sit with Baba sometimes and absorb love and just let Baba's energy heal us and empower us. And then other days we might have more clarity and we can practice a bit more. I shared with you all before that Betty Janki had said to me to read a little bit of knowledge before sitting in yoga. She found that was useful. So again, at that time of the morning, we're filling our mind a little bit with new thoughts, positive thoughts, because we might have woken up in a subconscious state. We might have had all sorts of funny thoughts come in our mind. So at that time, of sort of taking our mind into elevated space, and that could take time. Um, over the years, my experience has been that, that Amrit Vela has become more and more powerful. And that, uh, for me, is my sustenance. So for me, it's all about Amrit Vela. And then I hear the morally at five o'clock, so straight afterwards. And um, that really is my sustenance. And as that connection has continued to deepen, then, um, can really feel Baba's energy very, very powerfully. And so uh, it's about our catching power continuing to develop. So then Shiv Baba becomes more and more real as our source of all treasures compared to everyone in this world. So the more we're staying in yoga, the more we're experiencing then Shib Baba continues to dominate our mind and our emotion through the day. And then people 
down here, that continues to reduce. So their impact internally reduces and ship bubbles influence continues to increase. So then the motivation is to increase that chart and moving further towards constantly open. So I hope that answers your question. It did a whole lot. Um, it's clarified. This is why I like to come to these classes and I thank you so much for bringing on these types of um, Zoom sessions because we learn so much. There, is little, there are little things in our mind that we wouldn't get otherwise without discussions like this. Um, so with the meditation, and I think it's the most important thing in, in, in our yogic life um, to be able to have that full awareness of what is meditation? What am I doing this for? What am I am I going to gain? And you did answer all these questions. So what in conclusion in my mind, we talked to Baba. Let Baba know we know who he is, what he is, what you know, what his abilities are, and um our connection with him will purify us. And you, you just sit in that silence with absolutely no expectations and let Baba's light flow and cleanse that soul. And then at the end, I would sit and um and give send Baba's light to the world, to the globe, um, without expectations, understanding that Baba knows what each soul needs. And then I finish my meditation like that. So the little ideas you gave in the different stages, it's very, very helpful. And I'm sure a lot of us gain from that today. Thank you so much, Shanti. Yeah. Thanks for the question. It gives me a chance to expand a little bit more because in the morning it's quite short, so I can, I can share bits and pieces. So this gives me a chance to just expand. And you see, over the years as well, it really is about discovering the different relationships. So when I am a child in front of Baba, then maybe I am making more requests. But then as a student, then maybe it's more about discovering. Then maybe at times I need to be a follower of the Sadhguru and just be obedient. So there's, you see, yoga is this relationship. It's not just about what Baba's doing. It is about how I am being with Baba, how I am relating to Baba. And so that might also be where I am at emotionally or whatever's going on in my life. So it will be according to that. But what Shibaba says to us, I'm available. This is the time in the cycle where I come to fulfill all relationships with you. So you just got to make the most of it. It's up to you to use me. The general things that is going to do for the world, you know, He's getting on, he's doing some unlimited tasks, he's getting on with his thing. But in terms of me, the it came in the board messages as well that each individual child felt like they were a goat or gopi dancing with Baba. That's what yoga is. You see, every gop and gopi felt that Krishna is dancing just with them. And so this is the memorial of yoga that we can all. We all have Baba, we all say my Baba, but Shiv Baba is the one soul who has this capacity to fulfill all relationships with all souls. And so this is the time to experience that consciously. So we do need to break that down. And it's through the moral link that we understand, first of all, what that means. And then it's about practicing in yoga. So you, first of all, we can start off with the mother. Devi Janki used to say, we always start off with Baba, the mother. So as the mother, Baba is totally unconditional. As you are, what you are, you are mine. And we need a lot of love. We need, we've got to heal a lot. And so we get coated in love by Baba, and Baba is looking after everything for us. And then as the father... Uh, it came in the morally last week. It was um, the words of the song were um, 
take the blessings from, it was last Saturday's morning, we take the blessings from the mother and father. And uh, when, when did you open your eyes? It was when you were in the lap of your mother. When did you see the world? It was while sitting on the shoulders of your father. And that's the sentiment that we have to experience here, that, you know, being in Baba's lap, we don't have anything to think about. Being on Baba's shoulder, we've got self-respect. We're, we're seeing the world in a different way. That's the father. Then the teacher is about improvement and learning and studying and earning our own income. So Baba's expecting us to get empowered. And then with the Sadhguru, it's about claiming blessings, claiming the heart throne. So as we master things, we gain blessing. And then we also have those other relationships, the friend, the brother, the sister. We've got to have all relationships. Sometimes Baba says he's the grandparent. And then we have the different titles as well. Baba's the boatman, the guide. Uh, Sister Mahini was saying, um, I think it was while I was there in New York, that she particularly connects with Baba as the guide. She's always felt she needed someone to guide her. And so for her, that's very important, very central in her connection. Um, for like It was in the Borg message as well from Sister Sheshi, but Baba stood behind with every child and the children thought, who's disappeared? Where have you gone, Baba? And Baba said, no, I didn't go anywhere. I was your back door. I was standing behind you. And Daddy Jemke used to tell the story of when they moved to Mount Abu, Baba used to like to do hill walking. And the daddies would like to try and walk with him. He used to go every morning at 9 a.m. So he used to write letters and the post went at nine. So he would do the, the post and then nine o'clock he would go for a walk. And when they went as a group, sometimes Baba would be in the front of the group leading the way and you had to keep up with him. So he was six foot with big strides and Lady Jenki was four foot eight with little legs. And so she was scampering along. But Baba was going to show the way. So she used to remember that when she came to London. But sometimes Baba guides us by showing us the way. You've got to just follow. Sometimes, you know, something's happening. You know you're not in control, but drama is happening. Baba is happening. You've got to just do it, follow. And then at other times, Baba would be at the back of the group like a shepherd. And he was like the backbone. And she would say that that really helped her. That sometimes you're asking for guidance and you're not getting it. And that's because Baba's expecting you to lead them. And you've got to be the leader and he is your backup. And you've got to trust your own decisions. So he's empowered. So in this way, we've got to experience all these different titles and understand how, okay, Baba showed us in the corporeal form, but he's saying that why he pulled Brahma Baba into the subtle region is now Brahma Baba can also be with every single child. And he can also be present. So Sister Jendi often says this as well, that there were no Brahmins in other countries until after Brahma Baba went to the subtle region. And she was saying that now there's a Brahmin in every time zone. So somewhere in the world, someone is having Amrit Veda at every hour of the day, pretty much. So, you know, Bhaktada are touring around this world. You know, they are present for those Brahmins, sustaining them at Amrit Veda. And Shri Baba was very clear that your sustenance would continue through Brahman uh, when he pulled him up into the subtle region. He said, you know, this is why everything continues, but now Brahma, he doesn't have to think about his own body. He can just full time be there with the Brahmins. And so 
uh, now through the yoga of the intellect, we have to experience both the mother and the father, both Brahma and Shiv Baba. With Shiv Baba, the rule is the children have to have courage than the father had. The children have to remember, and then the father responds. This is the rule with Shabbat. But what about when we don't have courage? What about when we just don't have that clarity and we can't connect in our yoga? That's when Brahma Baba has yoga for us. So this is why it's the mother and the father. When you're feeling weak and Shabbat seems distant for you, talk with Brahma Baba. Talk with mama. The mothers, they help us out at that time. They're having yoga. Brahma Baba is having yoga for us all the time anyway. But he will especially have yoga for you when you need. Baba Baba's attitude is not that, oh, you're weak. We'll you know, leave you to it. Baba Baba's attitude is you're weak. Let me help you more. And so um, this is why also Brahma Baba as the mother is very important for us. I, I had a question from one sister just last week, actually, that um, she was feeling like she was having a tough time. We all understand, we all got different karmic accounts that come our way. We all can sympathize. And she was feeling that maybe she made a mistake and Shababa was punishing her and unhappy with her, maybe Shababa was distant. And I said, no, Baba is actually very clear about this, that he only punishes at the end. When it's judgment thing, he becomes dharma, And then he takes a different form because father, teacher, sattva has ended and he becomes dharma, and he takes account at that time. But it is a misunderstanding if Brahmins think that Shibaba punishes now. This is a misunderstanding. Shibaba is very clear. He is the father, the teacher, and the subject of man. He does not play the role of Dharamraj now. He plays the role of Dharamraj on judgment. So the rule is that only a pure soul can go to the soul world. So if we have any karmic accounts remaining, that we did not clear through yoga, then we have to face him. Then at that point, and clear them. But it's not true. If any Brahmin thinks that Shiv Baba is punishing you now, this is not true. This is your own mind. Uh, because Shiv Baba is very clear about this. He is the father, the teacher, and the sadhguru. And, and Brahma Baba is the mother. The senior mother saying he is not going to punish anyone. And Mama is the mother of the Yajna. She's very, she's very sweet anyway. So I mean, there's no question of anyone punishing. And what I said to that um, sister was because she was feeling that there was such a barrier in her mind, she couldn't connect with Shiv Baba because she felt it must be her own guilt, maybe. Um, you know, up her own sort of maybe sometimes we can be carrying beliefs from back then, from the past, like it can be old sun stars where uh, in back then, whatever back then we followed, we might have tried many different religions, but often there's that feeling of guilt. You know, we are made to feel guilty. Um, there's a fear, we must fear God. We must be guilty. We must be shameful. And we have these some stars, and maybe we also did that for others. And we made them feel like this also. So we have these karmic accounts from that past. And we project all of this onto Shabbat that he is punishing me. He is making me feel guilty. You know? And Shabbat is ocean of love, ocean of peace, ocean of He's doing nothing like this. Um, so I just said to the sister, okay, don't talk to Shiva. Write to Mama. And the sister just messaged me two days ago and said, brother, you helped me so much. Everything changed. Because why Mama and Baba, they're there. Brahma Baba full time in the subtle region. 
is because sometimes we don't feel the strength to connect with Shiva. So Brahma is the mother. He has sympathy. Shiva never became impure. So he doesn't have sympathy like that. It's not like he made effort and he conquered Maya. He dealt with, he didn't do these things. So Shiva is the father. He always says, I'm not the mother, I'm the father. But Brahma Baba is the mother, and the mother has empathy and sympathy. And Baba tells us in the Morali that because Brahma was in the front, he experienced everything for us. So every why Brahma Baba is the mother of this religion, every experience that every Brahmin has had, Brahma Baba had before. So the rule is that that Brahma must experience everything. So we, we know from his story, like he had business, his mother died when he was young, we built business, we had marriage, yeah, like very experienced in Bhakti. And then he became BK, Shabba became, then he's trying to set up the Yagya, and then he has community opposition, and people are trying to, oh, and we know, we know the whole story then he is making his own efforts then he has illness of the body his operation we know old age we know he experienced everything so brahma baba is sometimes baba uses this term but this is the story of the true naran so is this more of me it's the story of the true naran and what that means is like in hinduism that story is meaningless it's just like it doesn't have any content in it it is just like a story of someone who heard a story of someone who heard a story like this. And it is all about superstition. But if you don't fast on this day, this bad luck, it's like that. It, but the story of the true Narayan means the story of this man who dealt with everything. Use Shababa's morally, use Shababa's virtues, use yoga power to deal with everything and became the angel, who became the Nara. Um, so this soul understands you. And Brahma Baba understands all of us. So sometimes you will feel that Shri Baba can't connect so much right to Brahma Baba. And today in the Mali, Brahma Baba was saying that, look, this Brahma, he is like father. Uh, other Kumar, meaning half Kumar, right? He was father and then he adopted celibacy, so he so became like a man, so he's like half. Whereas Mama was a uh, Kumari from the beginning, she was a young girl. And so you look how Baba did it, right? He got one older person, man, one younger person, girl, woman, both mothers, right? And uh, I remember Sister Vedanti, she came to the UK, this was 15 years ago, maybe 20 years ago. And I remember her giving a talk at the Global Retreat Center. And she was saying how it must not have been easy, either of them. Because if you're an older man and you've got your own experience and and then all the people you're working with, they're 15 years old, 17 years old, 20 years old. That's not easy. And then Shibab is saying, surrender every all wealth to them. Let them run it. That, that is a big, that actually, you are the one who knows, right? And then you are handing over like that. That, that can't be easy. Then if you're a 17-year-old girl like mine, Right. By 19 years old, everyone is calling her mama. And you are suddenly, right? Like Daddy Chandramani used to say that Baba, he was searching, like, who, what is going on? You know, who is Shri Baba? So in 1937, Brahma Baba went for six months to Kashmir on a retreat, left mama in charge of everything. And she was only 17. And when he left, the class was... 200 people, he came back, 1,000 people were coming to Mali. Mama expanded everything. 
Bible wasn't even there. And this is so new. Everything is so new. And Mama then, then 400 people come. Mama has to run five buildings, 400 people. Not easy, right? So both of them, they got understanding. They got empathy. They got sympathy. So actually, yoga is relationship. We are connecting with these three. These are the three parents. So yes, only if we remember Shibaba, then sins are destroyed. Yeah, we, we know. We, we're not remembering Brahma Baba. We're not remembering Mama. We are remembering Shibaba. But the relationship with Brahma Baba and Mama, that is also important. And that is also part of that. Because Shibaba always says, he never says, I am the mother. Not one more of it. Not one more than Brahma Baba says to him, you are the mother of God. But never should Baba accepts. He always says, I combine. I combine with you. And then it's the mother of God. So what he is saying to us, you got to connect with that also. And so you, he often says, some people, they say, I connect directly with Shibaba. And Shibaba always says, no child. You got to listen to the morally. And you've got to connect with Brahma as well. And so this is all part of yoga. So there's not one method, not one technique, but you are individual. Baba has adopted you, you adopted Baba. Have faith. Baba's going nowhere, you're going nowhere. So now you got to work with Baba, work with Mama get there, get to your destination. And so this is yoga. Uh, yoga is in everything we're doing, Every, how we use our time, how we use our money, what we do. This is all yoga. It's always Baba, Baba for Baba. Everything is for Baba. And through that, we are going gaining and we are using things in a worthwhile way. And Jumba, do you want to add anything? So thanks for giving me the chance to clarify. Would anyone else like to come in? Om Shanti, Shalom, bye. Um, Om Shanti, I have a question, two questions. First one is based on what you've mentioned, that when you drive a car, you imagine as Baba is sitting behind the seat or one of the... Um, uncle that when he does his accounting work he put a chair for Baba uh, which Baba do you imagine because uh, if he's come to Shiv Baba he's very subtle uh, so is it Brahma Baba is what you imagine as sitting in the car or yeah. Sit Baba yes so um, in this world and in the subtle region I visualize Shiv Baba inside of the body of Brahma and in the soul world, I only remember Shib Baba. That's so, right. okay. So um, Shib Baba, when he's in the soul world, he's a soul, like we all are. But when Shib Baba, he leaves the soul world, he combines with Brahma. So in the subtle region, he's combined with the angelic Brahma. So we visualize there the angelic body of Brahma. And then this is why Baba, he sits in the forehead and we meet through the drishti. And if you listen to the trans messengers, this is what they say, that they have the experience that they've gone into their angelic body. And it is the language of the eyes. It's like a, they just know. They're looking into Baba's eyes. His thoughts sort of get conveyed into their mind. And that's what they share with that. Then down here, uh, again, it's visualizing that angelic body of Brahma and then Shiv Baba. Uh, Dada Nirvair had asked Brahma Baba this in, in the 1960s, that what should I do at Amrit Vela? And Brahma Baba had told him to do this, visualize the angelic body of Brahma and invite Shiv Baba to come and sit in that body. Uh, because in those days, Brahma Baba didn't allow the picture of Brahma Baba. So no one had those pictures. And uh, so he said, visualize it and then 
have that. And David Nirvai said he practiced that every day. He said when he was living in Mumbai before, he didn't focus on yoga so much. It was more service and things. And then he moved to Madhuban in 1970. And then after he moved to Madhuban, he focused on yoga a lot more. And then over many years, he practiced that at Amadela and it became more and more real, more and more deeper the experience. So he said he has this experience every day now, like of meeting that other, like really meeting. So this is what we're doing. We are practicing. And then initially it's like we are visualizing. And then over the years, what happens? It's our intellect has continued to become purified and refined. So then it becomes more like a third eye. So you move from visualizing. So it's, more, it's more like a divine insight. And so it's not really trying. It's more just experience. But that takes those years of practice. And then the intellect continues to develop. So that third eye that Baba has given us, it has to be exercised in order to become powerful. And then we also have to remove the wasteful thoughts and the negative thoughts and the impure thoughts because that creates a cloud in the eye. So then we also cannot experience them. Thank you. That's really helpful. Thank you so much. My second question, if time permits, otherwise we can. Uh, go ahead. Baba said, uh, you know, the, we were reading the Avyak Murli. Baba said uh, about three com combined form. One is soul with body, which is eternal, and then Vishnu form. And then Baba said the special one is confluence age one. Baba combined with uh, Shiv Shakti, basically. Can you expand on that? What what does really Baba mean by combined? He's always with us during confluence age. Does that mean our intellect and Baba's intellect connected? Or what does that combined form be like? If you want to meditate or if you want to, a situation comes, if you want to feel it, how would you feel it as these combined? Yeah, I don't know if it's another morally, but I thought it was four combined forms. So it's our self and the angelic form as well. So um, what it is, is that um, one of the illusions that we have in some body conscious thinking and some religious thinking is that we are individuals and that we are separate from something. But if we look at nature, we're learning, aren't we, that everything is in, in that connect, interconnected. You change one thing in one place and then it affects everything. It's like, it's like a big system. And what about the metaphor that Baba uses is that we are all part of a tree. And I was listening to a science program on the BBC radio about trees uh, last week and the prophet one of the professors was explaining that the part of the tree that has memory is the seed the seed carries memory and they discovered this because there's a species of tree in germany which is from originally from spain so this species as the climate began to warm in, in that part of Germany, that tree began changing back the leaves like it was in Spain. So this, this tree, like the birds, they spread the seeds like all over. This is how you know, trees and plants, they get planted everywhere. And they found that actually the, these seeds had come originally from Spain. But the seed for 1,000 years was producing different leaves with the German plant. But as the climate became warmer, more like Spain, it had a memory of the previous leaves of Spain and began creating those new leaves. So they began to learn 
then they're also discovering a lot about the communication between trees, like they have a root system. And initially they thought that, you know, it's communicating maybe just among itself. But then they learned that trees talk to each other. And so the different roots are communicating weather and climate. And more recent research in the last 10 years is that you will always find mushrooms uh, near to tree roots. And actually these mushrooms are communicating and controlling a lot together with ants. And they all talk to each other. And now recent research has found trees, they talk to other plants also and not just other trees. And they're all connecting. So underneath the ground, so many things are happening. So what Shibata says is, you are foolish if you think that you are a soul on your own. Because you as a soul are part of some ecosystem. It's very big. And so you as a soul, the word Baba uses, is rosary, you are part of rosary. So the meaning of rosary is combined them. So you are always part of a network. For example, you were born into a family. So you could call your family a rosary. Um, you go into a school, your class is a rosary, your school is a rosary. You go and work in a company, the company is a rosary and so on. So the whole, uh, you live in a town, a city, that's, it's a rosary, right? It's a network. Um, and one part, like you look at your, the town that you live in, it's made up of so many components, right? That are making this town work. And that's why you are one part of it. So what that is saying is everything in this drama is in a combined form with something else. It, it, there is no part of this drama that is not connected with something else. And even if you look at the ages of the cycle, they connect with each other. So it's not like they are just on their own like that. No, everything connects with everything else. And then, Baba, it clarifies for us that the three worlds are also connected with this world. So there are souls coming from the soul world into this world. Then we all go together back up again, right? And so on. And then at this time, Baba is also using the angelic world and this is a connection, so like that. So Baba is saying that actually everything is connected. So you're always in a combined form. When you are a soul in the soul world, you are part of the rosary of Rudra. So you are connected with Rudra Shiva, the seed of the tree, as incorporeal, and you sit as part of an incorporeal tree. So this is a rosary. So you're connected with every other soul there as well. And when do you come down in this drama? When the soul before you and the soul after you, they come down. So we come down in sequence. Uh, so since the start, so today Baba was remembering the soul of Sri Krishna. Now really it's continuous, but if we want to say first one, then the soul of Adam, this is remembered, uh, Salwa Ben is here, I'm saying, uh, so in the Quran, uh, they talk of Aros, like the first day, and this is when Allah says to Adam, take the body. And initially, I think I am right, Adam says, no, I am fine. I will stay as angel. Thank you very much. And then Allah sends the angels to sing and come and they invoke. And th what, what um, Baba explains is that, you know, every religion got, you know, peace, got pieces. But like the Hindus, they talk of Sri Krishna, but they don't really know. They, they worship Sri Krishna, but they don't see Sri Krishna as actually the soul of Adam comes down as this first prince. This is this is our rules. This is the first day. And so when this soul comes down, imagine the light. Now that soul comes down. We are all in the clan of Krishna, right? We are all in the clan. 
So you can't stay up there, right? <laughs> you, you don't have that choice because you are part of that class. So you won't be able to sit up there. You have to then, we are all in a sequence because by the time Lakshmi and Narayan are married, 900,000 community of deities are present down here. So you are part of something else. Yeah. So this family, that 900,000, Baba has now recreated. There are approximately 900,000 souls who listen to the Mali every day. And these are the souls who are going to be. So you souls, you firstly become combined with the body. So down here, you can't just live as a soul. You have to be combined with nature. But this drama is this combined form, nature and the soul. So Baba says, you are the all-round actors. So really, you're always combined with the body, really. So you play your role, but you forget it's a combined form. In body consciousness, you forget the combined form. You just think you're a body. So your combined form in body consciousness becomes attachment with other people, attachment with things, attachment with roles, but you forget. Actually, you should be remembering the combined form. I, the soul, am a traveler, I'm an actor, I'm a guest, I'm a trustee. So I'm passing through this body, like, with this body, through this body. Right? I'm never permanent. So this is the first combined form. And then at confluence age, Baba makes us aware of him. So the second combined form I've explained today, this is yoga. This is what's called yoga. So Baba says, don't worry, 63 birth, you try to do everything on your own. You try to purify, you try to find God, you try to become liberated. You cannot do it. Now you combine with me. So father, teacher, suffer all relationships, combined with Baba. You don't have to do anything on your own. At confluence age, hold Baba's hand, we'll get you. Then the third combined form is with the our angelic form. And this, I can recall, I think, I think it might have been on Daddy Janki's anniversary in March or maybe Daddy Gulzar's anniversary, and Sister Mohini was in Madhuban at that time. I remember specifically she brought the Borg message, and she shared a story that I hadn't heard her share before, but when she was new as a BK in the 1960s, she had just begun realizing that she has this gift of this trance, and there were three or four of these young sisters being able to do that, and they were in Madhuba. And Brahma Baba called them at Amrit Vela to come and sit in his room, and he would give them like little things to ask Shiv Baba. So they used to take messages up. And what Brahma Baba asked them was, go and talk to that angel Brahma up there in the Sato region and see what is the differences between that Brahma and this Brahma and come and tell me. And so she was recalling that story when Baba called her into trance this much. And Baba had said to all of us that we should keep that angelic, our own perfection. So Shiv Baba has invoked every Brahmin's angel form into the Sattva. And so your perfection is already in Bhattava's vision up there. And by doing that, he is invoking the perfection that's inside of you. And so what Baba is saying to us is every day, keep that perfection in front of you and then close that gap. So whatever are the virtues in your perfection, think to yourself, I have to become that. So Brahman Baba made that up. I have to become that. And so that is your 
combined form. So you've got your combined form with the body, the combined form with Bap Dadanam, and then you've got your combined form with your angel, your perfection. And then the combined form as a deity is this awareness of being part of this clan of Krishna, the clan of Lakshmi and Narayan. That we are going. So Baba says, remember the father and the inheritance. So you're going now into that golden age. So Baba says, you've got to forget this old world. And so by, when it's combined form with your deity form, it means forgetting this old world. So Baba is saying, you know, you how much are you going to keep a desire for the iron? Because actually you won't find what you're looking for here. Uh, you won't find peace, justice, love, it, not, it's not reasonable to expect at the end of the Iron Age, you will get these things. You will not get them. So develop the same traits and combine, think about now the golden age. So then you will have everything. Here you will not. And so this is the four combined forms that we've got to keep in mind. So this is what Raj Yoga is. We can add in a fifth one, and this is linked with servants, that we are all part of this tree. And so as the Brahmin souls, you are the roots of the tree. You are the ancestors for the whole of humanity. Every religion remembers ancestors, every single, every tradition. There is a remembrance of the ancestor, but they don't know that's you. And so you are these ancestor souls. So when you connect with the seed, the vibrations reach everyone. Like, for example, the religious fathers, they are the ancestors for their religion, but their vibrations won't spread through the whole tree. Their vibrations will spread through their branch. Right? But because you are the roots of the tree, you are the trunk of the tree, your vibration spreads to all the branches. So the Brahmin soul has a unique role and a unique connection. So for you, like there's a, in the film Gandhi, um, there's a line where Gandhi says, uh, because he was brought up in a quite an eclectic, uh, type of atmosphere and he used to appreciate the Quran and he, the, he shares that the priest in his temple when he was a child used to read from the Quran, used to read from the Gita, used to read from the Sikh scripture. Like he didn't mind, he was referring to many different traditions. So Gandhi said, you know, I am a Muslim, I am a Hindu, I am a Christian. And for the Brahmins, as an ancestor soul, all of the branches, they belong to you. Uh, as now, at this point of the cycle, we are not any religion. We are all. Um, and all are ours. And so you are the ancestor for the whole of humanity. So everyone belongs to you. So I particularly focus evening yoga for everyone. And so you'll see that in almost every tradition, they will have evening worship, like some sort of sunset type of worship. And this is because the Brahmins, they said, you know, in every religion, they will have sunrise worship, because the Brahmins have Amritvada, and they will have sunset worship. And this is the timing of the day, particularly where the Brahmins have to spread. You, you are combined with everyone at the confidence age. Thanks for that. Does anyone have any other question in Ramon? Uh, Om Shanti. Sorry. Well, just just one simple question: Is there is that where the you know the name Shiv Shankar comes 
ah, is yeah. the combined form of Shri Baba and us the soul. And that's right. where in devotees that got mixed up as Shiv Shankar and saying he's God. So yeah, that's, that's yeah, I think so. And I think particularly with Baptada. So you know, you'll hear in the morally, well, see, when we're explaining knowledge to Hindus, we don't start off by telling them there's not really Brahma, Vishnu, Shankar. So what you'll hear in the morally is Baba will say. Well, Brahma, Vishnu, Shankar, their deities in the subtle region, but above them is Shibaba. He is kind of like, so you, this is the way we explain because someone from a Hindu background, it's too much like to start off like that. But actually, there's no Vishnu up there, there's no Shankar up in the subtle region. So, what Baba explains is that. Actually, Vishnu is in the golden age. And he says, Shankar has no role. And he says, Brahma is down here. So at that time, Prajapita Brahma, Brahma Baba has to be down in this world. So this angelic Brahma, this is really Shankar. So they show Shankar as sitting like on top of a mountain in, in meditation. He's like sitting in the snow. This is how they show him. And he has this third eye open. And this, so Baba explains this is like the perfection of the angel. And this is the memorial of Shankar. But Hinduism is not very subtle. Like if you read like the Quran, the Bible, a little more subtle, but the Bible is also quite physical, like Adam, like how they depict God and Adam. It's a like very like physical body. The Quran is much more angelic, I think. But at one time, we want to have a special session in that with um, But um, Hinduism, they don't really have angels, right? It's not, it's not very subtle. So like this, Shankar is quite uh, like a physical image as well. But actually, everything is very subtle. And so Shibaba, very subtle. Brahmagava is subtle. So I think Babdada has been memorialize a Shiv Shankar. Um, and then you're, I think you can also say Baba and the Brahmins as well. Sometimes Baba says, you are also Shankar, you know, you are having yoga with Shiva. Um, then one of the favorite titles that Baba gives us is Shiv Shakti. So um, the goddess form, uh, that is the combined form with Shiva. And the soul is the Shakti. So that's because Shiva is always male. And so as Baba is the beloved, he is the male. And I, the soul, even if the body is male, I, the soul, in relation to Shiva, Baba, I'm always female. So I am the Shakti. And he is the male form. So I think all of that gets memorialized, as you say. Thank you. Thank you, Shanti. Shayla Penn, did you want to say anything? Om um, Shanti, yes, there was a question, but maybe we can pick that up next week. Uh, but um, it's about the feeling when we are practicing the five forms uh, of um, you know, uh, meditation. Uh, Baba mentions this, and uh, I was just trying to work out our own feelings when we are trying to do this meditation. At, at this time in all five uh, different forms. So it's just, um, it, it's quick. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, uh, I was listening to uh, Brother Raju uh, give a class uh, in Peace Village in New York a couple of weeks ago. And he was sharing how Devi Prakashmani would often get the Madhava Nivasis up for 2 a.m. to 5 a.m. on Ritvena. Do you remember it came in the morning two or three weeks ago where Baba was saying to all of us, try and get up at two o'clock. If not two, get up at three. If not three, get up at four. So he was encouraging us. And Devi Prakashmani used to do that with them. Right? He was saying she would then lead the yoga at the front of the hall. And the way she wouldn't speak a commentary like, a, a continuous commentary, but she would say, right, 15 minutes, 
we're going to practice being a soul in the soul, the Shiva. Then after 15 minutes or 30 minutes, she would say, right now we are going to take Jishtu from that better in the subtle region. Like that. So these different forms, like you're mentioning, that's the way she would do it. And I think that's a good way. So you can do it in different ways. I think we've got lots of commentaries now, which are useful. And you can just set yourself, okay, 30 minutes, I'm just going to practice one of the five forms and then deepen that experience. And then in the day, maybe we're just practicing drills just of that form. And then we can think about the others. So in this way, I don't think there's a right way or there's a wrong way of doing these things. I think you can try different things and maybe at different times, different things uh, I experience better. My main experience is it's about perseverance and it's about doing this all the time. So I always was interested in yoga from the beginning. Some people, they don't really like yoga so much. They have to the gym. I always enjoyed yoga. I always experienced things in yoga. Um, and over the years, it's just been committing to that and deepening that experience. So I really think, you know, it's nothing complicated, but it's about time and giving time to yoga. Does that, does that answer your question? Sure, uh, we'll come back uh, to you uh, later on the experiment. Thank you. Yeah. Come back and share your experiences. I think the thing about experience is it motivates each other. It also helps clarify. Uh, but, you know, I've shared this in my recordings as well, that often you get a new person, they come and they want a technique. So like, well, okay, so what's step number one? What's step number two? What's step? But I've read these moralies thousands of times, right? I cannot find a morally that ever does it like that. Uh, the moralies are much more about building things into your life, you know, building the relationships. And yes, we've got to have a routine. So that is very strict about routines, very strict about discipline, like that. That's true. But apart from that, this relationship with Shababa, it's meant to be built in to our life. And so it's all relationship. And I really don't think there's a technique because every Brahmin is different. And we all relate slightly differently to Baba. And we are all experiencing Baba slightly different, um, slightly different angles. It's like um, if all of us went to visit a mountain and we said, we're all going to climb this mountain, but we're going to do it at different parts. So you will, we will all climb this mountain, but you saw something a little different to me because you came on the backside, I came on the front side, and we all had a different perspective in June to getting there. And I think that's, you know, Shababa has got so many facets so we're all slightly experiencing but the slightly different thing. Thank you. Welcome. Cool. I think let's switch across to Morally. Um, I know Ranjan Ben. Ranjan Ben, you prepared a Morally, mm haven't -hmm. you? How long is that Morally? Okay. So let's listen to a bit of the morally. And um, we've got the bit about rejecting. Yeah. Can we put that in? Yeah. Yeah. But do you want to begin with the Jagdish file and then we're going to? So yesterday was the anniversary of Dada Jagdish. And Dada Jagdish was one of the first students where they started the very first center in Delhi. And uh, he came to Baba in 1952. And it was just at the start of service and also the start of poverty uh, within the Yakya. And this brother, he was uh, intellectual. So again, that was a big thing. 
or an intellectual to come. And so then he became the first one really to begin communicating a lot with the public. How do, how do we get this knowledge out? And uh, he moved into the centers. He, I was listening to Devi Chakradhari uh, some years back, and uh, she was there with Brother Jagdish when they were starting a center in Shakti Nagar in Delhi. And they had one room, and there were four of them. Daddy Gulzar was the senior sister. So they had one bed. So Daddy had the bed, and they put their clothes underneath the mattress so that Daddy could iron them while she slept. And that was all they had. And then two sisters slept on the floor and they put one curtain up and Dada Jagdish slept on the floor there on that section behind the curtain. And that was the center, that one room. And this is how they have set up uh, centers at that time. So Dada Jagdish, how they managed to expand service they had nothing. And so this brother was the first brother to surrender at that time of poverty. And so Baba really appreciated it. He spoke English as well, so that really helped, and could write and read in English and in Hindi. And he had mastered both languages, so he was very important. And he became then, um, because Mount Abu had no infrastructure, it's like a rural, uh, at like a backstop somewhere. So it didn't have, even even if you had electricity, you were lucky. If you, you didn't have running, they, in Madhupan, they had pumping, which, no, no running, which, no nothing. So um, Baba then made the head office in those days, Delhi, because they had some infrastructure there. So uh, Dada Jagdish became like the even though Baddara was in Madhavan and Mama was there too, and Mama was mainly Puri and the centers. So the head office became Delhi for the institution um, and everything. So Dada Jagdish really, he was the one who developed all of the service around India. And then he also started the service in Russia. He was the one who came uh, uh, led the group in 1971 to London and then America, they went. So this is the brother. And they do the service to the different professions like sports wing, media wing. He set all of that up. So this is the brother really who is the seed of all of other services. And he was the senior brother of the Yagya from the 1950s right up until 2001 and then he left the body back. so we're going to hear a little passage from the 1980s when he's made in Baba after one of the murders yeah it's from the movie of 22nd January 1984 and the theme is claiming the medal of victory but uh, that's the message for uh, Bhakta that's speaking to Jagdish Pai. Uh, Baba is saying, those people who have received sustenance from corporeal Bhakta that are valued, just as in the locic way, also the fruit that has ripened on the tree has greater value. So, fruit, those who have received corporeal sustenance are the same as the food that ripens on the tree. Nowadays, everyone looks with such love at those souls who have had that experience. You receive the blessing in the first meeting. Sustenance means that expansion has taken place on the basis of those blessings. So uh, Dada Jagdish used to share that the first time he went to Madhuban, it was, I think, 19, yeah, 1952. So he had taken the course, um, actually, with Daddy Janki. She was running the center there in Delhi. And then after seven days, so in those days, you had to live in the center for seven days and have a 
full retreat and you were given the course over seven full days. And then at the end, you had to write to Baba for permission to come and meet him. So he went and he wrote, um, they had just moved to Mount Abu. And he said the first thing he saw was Brahma Baba was breaking the rocks to create the path up to the center. And so that really stayed with him. And then later in the evening, he had the chance to meet Shabada. And he had such a deep experience of the mother and father. He just began crying and then hugged Baba and went into Baba's lap. So he had come with questions, as you can imagine, when you're new. But then he had such a deep. So Baba's referring to this. I don't know if you want to read it again, that you received in the first meeting. So he had this very deep experience of the mother and father when he first met Baba. You received the blessing in the first meeting. Sustenance means that expansion has taken place on the basis of those blessings. This is why the sound of being experienced in Sakar sustenance will continue to grow souls to take the sustenance. You are the one with the experience of enjoying the waves of many relations with the ocean. This is why you will continue to enable innumerable others to experience the enjoyment of the many different waves of relationships. You became an instrument for the sake of service at the beginning of the period of economy. And because you became an instrument at the time of economy, the fruit of service will forever be elevated. You cooperated in accordance with the period, and this is why you received the blessings. Acha. So it's um, like, uh, you know, if you look at the Kalpa tree, the picture, the original, the older picture, or original picture has Rabba Baba standing up, uh, waiting for us to become like that, to ripen our stage. And then, you know, automatically it's like uh, expansion of the tree then becomes a star of essence. And then the fruit is ripe and almost automatically the seeds are, it bursts and the seeds are again bring over to plant again. And Baba is referring to all of us to become complete so that we can give a message to the world. And so... <clears throat> So last week, Saturday, we read the Thule, in that Baba explained what the world benefactor means. We said world and the world benefactor, but Baba, you know, explaining that. And that was beautiful. And so it's uh, like Baba is saying, giving sustenance. So at present, we are giving sustenance to new ones, Baba's new children. And we are spreading which on in the world. And this is what Baba means that when we, we have taken a lot of sustenance from daddies, although we didn't make uh, Sakar Babas, but still we have met so many seniors, so many daddies, and we've taken a lot. It's a Baba means for Jagdish Pai that he came at the time of economy. And he, this is why he, Baba gave that blessing to him. So I just started from um, only of, uh, uh, you know, we've been um, all entire week, you know, but, uh, we had only about spontaneous, even in the blessings, even in the, how we have to signal. So I said, this movie, you know, do this movie. And, and if anybody has any requests on any special movie, we can do that. I just was this movie just came in front of me. I said it'd be good. This is why Baba chose this movie for us, and Baba is now 
talking to us, speaking to Guruji with us now, giving us extradition and sustenance. So it is a Murli of 20th January, 20th January 1984. Quality of contentment is the basis of all achievement. Today, Bhaktada is seeing the personality of purity of all his children, the royalty of becoming the embodiment of all achievement, and the reality of becoming the embodiment of remembrance of spirituality. All children are shining with the personality of purity and they are wearing a crown of light. On one side, Baba is watching his children who have achieved everything. And on the other side, he is watching the souls who haven't achieved anything. Though they have short-lived attainment, there is not the experience of attainment. They are not content. There is always a desire to gain one thing or another. They always have a deep desire for this or that. They hanker after desires. They are wondering about like thirsty souls trying to achieve something or other on the basis of the body. As for example, mental and physical health, well, etc. from human beings or from society. Efforts are being made with three particular things in mind. There is a desire to attain power, power of the mind, of the body, of wealth, of position, and of wisdom, knowledge. People still are seeking for knowledge in the world from other human beings, like Baba says, society. Second, others have desires of devotion. The desire to have experiences of true bhakti, devotion, for a moment. Some devotees do have this desire. Thirdly, having been through the experience of suffering from the copper age onwards, and seeing peacelessness and sorrow in this world, and seeing the limited achievements as illusory. Some want liberation from this sorrow, the sorrowful world of bondage. So they're seeking liberation from this sorrowful world of bondage. The devotees want devotion. Others want power, and some want liberation. Who will give the experience of peace and happiness to such deep, contented soul? You are the jewel of contentment. Who can give them the experience of purity, peace, and happiness, and a little knowledge as well? So Baba is reminding us of our responsibility. The Baba's you know, slogan was about that experience of, you know, we can only help him if we have experience, the authority of experience, Baba said in the um, uh, slogan. So we need to have this authority of experience, then we can help them. So Baba is saying, you are the jewels of contentment. 
who can give them the experience of purity, peace, and happiness, and a little knowledge as well. You are the children of the merciful Father. His Father has mercy on his children with the thought. In, in, in the inverted comma, it says, they are children of the donor, and they are asking for such little temporary achievement. In the same way, do you have the feeling of mercy and compassion for such stumbling souls? For your brothers who are wandering about in search of the fulfillment of these soul-plead desires, have a vision of mercy and compassion. So Baba is saying we also should have a thought like Baba, that they are children of the donor and they are asking for such little temporary achievement. So we also should have mercy and compassion. Be great donors and bestowers of blessings. Become shining jewels of contentment to all. Nowadays, devotees worship the mother of contentment, no? Santoshima. It's, uh, in, in East Africa, it was very common to every Friday have this uh, fasting for, on, on Friday, Santoshima means the mother of contentment on that day. They didn't eat all day anything, just have a little water, but no fruits that is sour, like, you know, because the uh, Santoshi means one who is contented, does not have any sourness, bitterness, or anything in the mind. And so that is the memorial of us at this time, mother of contentment, because it is this quality of contentment which is the basis of all achievements. Where there is contentment, there is, what is the fulfillment? Where there is contentment, there is fulfillment. In bracket it says, that is, there is no trace of anything lacking. On the basis of contentment, there is even the experience of having plenty of the perishable wealth. If there is contentment, then even two rupees are like having two million rupees. In the world, Baba is giving an example, some are very poor, but if they are contented, so contented that even two rupees are like having two million rupees. If someone is a millionaire but has no contentment, then even millions are not millions. They are beggars of their own desires. So there's a, a saying that lobi hamesha kangal means they always they are beggars of their own desire. Desires means restlessness. Desires would never allow you to become a good person because if a limited desire is fulfilled, upon its fulfillment, it gives birth to many other desires. This is why they are trapped in the web of desire. You know, the, uh, the spider builds such a lovely web, but what happens in the end, it gets trapped and dies in that. And this is how the millionaire who is not contented, well, this is what happens, that they are trapped in many other desires. This is why they are trapped in the web of desire. They want to be free, but cannot be free. So make such trapped brothers of yours 
free from all desires. Make them ignorant of desires for perishable things. They are restless because they are far from their original glory or position. They are restless because they are far from their original glory or position. They are not aware that they are children of God, the children of the donor, that is that all achievements are their birthright. Because they can't remember this, they are restless. So remind such souls of their elevated positions. Do you understand what you should do? All double foreign, foreigner children are going to their respective places. So this was the Bhakta Das meeting in 1984. It's 40 years ago. What will they do there? Fill the aprons of all souls with peace and happiness. Become donors and bestowers of blessings. Are you going with this thought? Seeing the courage and the love of the children. Bab Dada gives multifold love to his loving children in return. The children who live in far countries have recognized the father and on the basis of that recognition, they have come closer and are able to achieve everything. And many souls who live in this country, that is in Bharat, in India, but haven't recognized the father. So Baba is appreciating uh, foreign, double foreign, all foreign children because they have recognized Baba. Whereas those who live in, in this country, in Bharat, but haven't recognized the father are very far from achievements. This is why Bab Dada says, Continue to progress with great enthusiasm and courage, with the consciousness of all achievements and with contentment. The bestower of all achievements, the fortune maker father, Baba, is always with you. Acha. To the merciful children of the Baba is giving us yadpya, love and remembrance and blessing. To catch this. To the merciful children of the merciful Father who give contentment to others through the treasure of contentment. To children who are jewels of contentment who are the embodiments of all achievements and through their good wishes and pure thoughts also make others into embodiments of all achievements and others free from all perishable desires, love and remembrance and namaste to such mighty children. And we say namaste to Bhaktada. And then Bab Dada is speaking to the foreign group. Seeing the foreigner children, Bab Dada said, if any one of you from this group are asked to stay here, that is in Madhuban, are you ready to stay? What would you say to Baba if Baba asked you? You went to Madhuban. Are you ready to stay? Baba says, you don't have any bondages, do you? A time will come when your ticket will be cancelled and you will be asked 
to stay here, means in Madhuban. Some experience, a couple of years ago, death cancel here actually, but still, at that time, you won't be asking for any salvation. That is comforts, beds, a personal room, tea, etc. At that time, the accommodation was very basic. Now it's very modern. At that time, showers, everything was very basic and in Indian style. It wasn't, you know, so this is why Baba is asking. That at that time, you won't be asking for any salvation. That is comfort, bed, a personal room, etc., tea, etc. Do you remember the time when Brahma Baba became aware? Did you cook any food? How did you spend those four days? The days of destruction will be spent in the same way. So Baba is reminding us now that what that is experience, we also will be experiencing as the, as the time, such times will come when we will experience also. Because uh, Baba often says you double four and us bring such a big, big uh, suitcases and, you know, hand luggage, you can sleep on that. You can make a bed and a pillow from your, and Baba jokes that and so Baba is, now asking us that uh, the days of destruction will be spent in the same way. Just as you were lost in love at that time, in the same way, at the end, you will be in the state of deep love. So one of the four messages was about turning lost in deep love. And so Baba was saying, you know, last Thursday, the message from Piri Court. You, you, you know, Shannon has uh, already translated and sent to you. So it's the same, Baba is saying, at that time, you will be uh, is, is so state of deep love. You will be lost in love. Are you such carefree ones? No worries at all. You will do deep meditation on the mountains and see destruction with your third eye. Are you such carefree ones? You are carefree, aren't you? Do you have no worries at all? Neither of your houses, nor of your family, nor of your work, nor of anything. You don't have the question, what will happen? Whatever will happen will be good. This is called carefree. I thought this was good. That's a good preparation, good checking, subtle, deep checking. Because we, Baba has given a lot of time for tapasya meditation. Everybody is doing, but this is good to check. Baba is giving us insight how the end will be, what the situation will be. So I think it's very good that you need to check as well. Nothing, nothing should be remembered. So neither the buildings that are your centers, even the centers, nor guess what, luggage, <laughs> nor the bank balance, etc. Because yours is real money. Whether it has been used for the building of Baba's houses or whether it is in the bank, you will achieve multi-million fold. You have insured it. Because you have insured it, it cannot be wasted. So last couple of days, Two, three minutes, Baba has been talking about insurance. And Baba is an insurance magnet. And so, because my YouTube wasn't working, I usually watch that. And then, so I thought, well, let me read something. And so this only came out. And so I thought this is good. Baba has been mentioning everything. So this is right. So, but Baba is reassuring us that. Everything will be 
in Sheol. Because yours is real money, whether it has been used for the building of Baba's houses or whether it is in the bank, you will achieve multi-million fold. You have insured it. Because you have insured it, it, it cannot be wasted. The almighty authority is bound to give the return. This is why you don't have any worries. A piece of paper will become a piece of paper and dust will become dust, but you will achieve your rights a hundredfold. What else do you need? True wealth can never go to waste. Understand? So checkbooks is a piece of paper. Checkbooks, are, don't worry, Baba says, if you have invested with Baba in a worthwhile way. So Baba is asking, understand? So always remain carefree in, in what they command. Don't have this thought. I don't know what will happen to the center when it is left behind or what will happen to my home. Let there be no questions. Everything is going to be successful. Whether it is successful or not, you have willed it beforehand. You have made a will of it beforehand, haven't you? If someone has made a will beforehand, he becomes carefree. So you have made a will of everything, your thought, your breath, your seconds, your property, your everything. And if something is will, then it is not used for the self. Without receiving Srimad, you cannot use a single penny or second. Everything belongs to God. Now, so the soul cannot use this for their personal use. Yet they can use it according to godly direction. If not, it would be misuse of the trust. And two days ago, Baba said in a signal, Baba is a true trustee. And so I think this is good. Baba is teaching us what a true trustee is. So yet they can use it according to godly direction. If not, it would be misuse of the trust. If you have used a little money in any work without instructions, then that money will pull you towards itself. Money pulls the mind and then the mind pulls the body as well. And then there is restlessness or perplexion. But let's stop there. Yeah. Uh, because this is actually a topic I want to do as a separate entire session on this. Yeah. Ranjin Ben and I have translated about seven chapters of one of Dada Ramesh's books on pure wealth and the use of wealth. It's very interesting. And so like we're hearing from Bella just now that because body, mind, wealth, thoughts, words, actually we've got to use everything, right? And Betty Janke used to explain that there's a connection between the wealth of knowledge in our intellect how we use physical wealth and the food in our stomach. So it's like a triangle between the stomach, the intellect, and the wealth. So you, Baba's beginning to explain a lot of the detail here, but I think we should do a separate session and we'll be going to more depth. So let's stop there. We had a lot of uh, rich points. Is there anyone who has any final reflections before we stop today?
would you be able to also, I'm um, Shanti Mala here, would you be also um, able to add water to that as well? So he said, you know, use of well, food and water, because uh, Sudesh Didi gave a very interesting, it was a really like a two minute talk today at GRC on water. And it was really interesting. She was linking it to the breath and then to the vani, to, to the words coming out. So um, it would be really lovely if you can expand on that as well. Yeah, that sounds interesting. And uh, it is this, um, you know, this thing about energy, you know, like um, I think with Devi Janki and that, they really get us to think uh, about what is a yagya? Like why did Shibaba create something down here? You know, that's got everything. It's got body, mind, wealth. It's got all the materials in it. And it's something about an energy that has to come together from many different sources which then triggers destruction because Baba says that the spark of destruction emerges from this yagya and also he says that all of the materials of the world will be sacrificed into this yagya he says things like that there's, so there's something about the energy in this yagya, it's got to have water and air and earth, like all materials. And then it purifies all the materials of the world. There's something there that we've got to think about. So let's do a separate session and go into mm. more depth about them. Were you in, in GRC this morning, uh, Sudesh Vien? I, I heard a little bit, you know, there's a retreat and Sudesh Vien. That's, yeah, in that's what she said. And, um, yeah, yeah. In, in GRC, yeah, just before she uh, gave told yeah. Yeah. yeah, so this, I heard that. But wasn't that Japanese? Uh, yeah, yeah. He, Dr. Emoto's famous work, wasn't it, about the water crystal? Water. Yeah, so definitely, um, yeah. let's let's take up these things another time. Salwa, Ben, you were there. Did you have any reflections you wanted to share? Om Shanti. Thank you, brother and sister. I am very happy to be with the family. Um, about today, I was uh, really um, almost in uh, very moved with the story of brother Jagdesh. And uh, I remember how when I went to Madhuban, I bought as much as possible from the books. I could uh, for, for the weight of my luggage, and I uh, yeah, and just his story, his own story, reminds me of how Shiv Baba is creating the world. Is the steps, uh, the steps that Shiv Baba takes to recreate the world through the words. And how every every child has his uh, own uh, brick to add, but really, what uh, this child of my Baba did is uh, this is what we call angels. Actually, this is angels. This this um, contribution. This is what we will call later angels of God. But, and actually in Islam, it's wonderful to say, to, to find that there are four, six, six pillars of faith. Faith has six pillars. The first pillar is to believe in God. The second is to believe in his angels. The third is to believe in his malaika, kutubi. The kutub is the books. And then the fourth pillar is the messengers. And now I understand that messengers are not those that we know in religious books, but also every Brahmin is a ma messenger because he brings this message wherever he is, 
and there is a verse in Quran saying that, like God is saying, we won't send uh, punishment. وَمَا كُنَّا مُعَذِّبِينَ حَتَّى نُرْسِلَ رُسُلًا We won't send any punishment until, until a messenger has been sent. So this is the... And so the fourth is uh, to believe in the messengers and then to believe in the last day, the last day of judgment, and then to believe in the drama, if it is good or bad, believe this is, you know, this is the, the six uh, pillars. And it is just like a subtle, it is the subtle thing. These are subtle things, we cannot show them. Just, it's not like as prayer and fasting, and, but it is more subtle of the heart. It's, it's, and, Yes, you were talking about Brother Jagadish, and I first link I did is these angels that make the thing happens every cycle, this recreation again. And uh, yeah, and what I, I wanted also to, one day I have turned about this in this um, six pillars of faith. Uh, we should believe like in, in God, his angels, his books, his messengers, the last day. Everything was his, his, but not the drama. It is said, and believe in the qada and qada. This is the drama. It is not said his drama. It's like a separate entity. Believe in the drama. It's not his drama. And this confusion actually was very fatal in, in Islam. It's, it's to, to say that drama, it is drama of God, but actually it is a separate entity. And this is how we, we were separated, I think, from the real father. The, when we mixed up drama and, and the father, yeah, thank you very much, Om Shanti. Yeah, Shanti, nicely explained. Uh, really good points there. And just thinking about uh, Jagdish, by as you were speaking, you know, we've all read his books. I think we've all taken a lot from that. And how that first started was he had the idea to write a book for Baba. Until then, they were writing pamphlets and shorter things, and. Rama Baba said, okay, if you want to write a book, you have to convince Mama. And so he went into a meeting with Mama and another brother. And resources were very short at that time. So they really had to take decisions. Where are they spending the money? And after that meeting, um, Mama and that brother, they decided that he shouldn't write any books. It's too much cost. So he came out of that meeting and he said he kept his contentment. And then as he was walking back, Brahma Baba was walking toward. And Brahma Baba asked him, so what happened? Did you ask them about the book? And he said, yes, Baba, but Mama said no. And Baba said he had a big smile on his face. And he said, okay, child, go ahead and write your book. You don't need to ask permission anymore. And Baba was just testing him to see whether he had the humility to accept the no. And he saw that he accepted the no. And then after that, he said, you don't need to ask again. Now just begin writing. Mm -hmm. And so the foundation, as you said, it's an angel. The foundation is egoless. So this is why he's able to do all of these and write all of these things. If he had got upset, then probably Baba would not have permission also to do all these things. Well, Baba gave him the title of Ganesh. You know the Hindu god with the head of the elephant? Ganesh, we always put him in every auspicious task, wedding, anything, anything, because 
it's the removal of any obstacle. And he became, he got the title of Ganesh. We all, Baba gives us all, but first title because he was always very positive, always content. Sanjay, Sanjay, the one who communicates the Gita to the blind king. So this was his role to communicate. I'm sure he's playing that role in another body, another form now, somewhere. So let's stop there. We had a rich and long session. Great to have you all here. Have a great week. And then we'll meet again next week. And maybe we'll go into further details about other things. But as Ranjan Ben said, if any of you have requests, any moralities, any topics, feel welcome to suggest them. And also warm greetings to those of you tuning later in through YouTube. So have a great week, everyone. Om Shanti. Thank you, Om Shanti. Om Shanti. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.